Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. What started as a chase ends in a deadly crash in Northeast Bear County. Coming up this morning on GMSA, what we're learning from the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Plus, we're talking about the growth of the south side of San Antonio. And the big plans in the works, we're going to be joined by Councilwoman Rebecca Villagran in today's leading essay segment for all the details. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, not too much to see out there just yet. 48 degrees to start your Sunday morning. We're going to check in with Mike Osterhage in just a few moments. But until then, good morning. 8 o'clock this Sunday, March 21st. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yesterday, gorgeous outside. Beautiful. It was a beautiful first day of spring. Did you make it out there? Of course. I was outside. I... You know, I try to do a little bit of work every single day outside. On the garden. In the garden. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Mike, that was that fog that we saw? What was that? Uh, some some low clouds out there this morning, and uh, it, we're going to be getting rid of those and have plenty of sunshine. So first full day of spring is going to be just as nice as first day yesterday. Just lots of sunshine. It is chilly, though. I mean, as you're starting off, heading off to uh, grab some breakfast, early church services. Yeah, grab a jacket, but what a beautiful start to this Sunday. Yeah, it's nice looking. It's going to be just one of those days where you just get outside. Just even take the TV out there. Yeah, just enjoy the sunshine. Uh, 46 here in town. Same thing, Balverde, 47 Comfort. Uh, Canyon Lake at 49.51 right now in Castroville. There is just a slew of allergens. All the trees are definitely in bloom. Oak is on the moderate side and low amounts of everything else out there. So if you're sneezing, sniffling, that's probably the reason why. We're going to make it up to 64 degrees today at noon. Mostly sunny skies. We'll have a couple of these clouds this morning and then plenty of sunshine, 74 for a high temperature later on today. Clear skies up through about news time tonight, uh, midnight or so. Then the clouds are going to start to come back in here. We'll have more humidity. Probably you're going to be starting off with a little bit of a patchy fog around the area tomorrow, and then we do have some rain chances. That's the good news. A couple of rain chances coming up here this week. More on that in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Mike. An overnight chase turning into a deadly crash in Northeast Bear County. The Bear County Sheriff's Office tells us this all started in the 7400 block of Teresa Drive off Walsham Road and ended off Ritterman and Frat. Now, Stephen Cavazos joins us live north of downtown this morning. Stephen, what do we know right now? Oh, Max, Sarah, the BC, a BCSO spokesman does tell us that this all started around 2.30 this morning. He tells us that a deputy had actually spotted a gray car that had been driving recklessly through the area, and things escalated to a chase when that driver refused to stop. Now, according to BCSO, the male driver was hitting curbs and passing through traffic lights, and at one point started driving in the wrong direction. Now, the chase came to a tragic stop when the driver of that car crashed into a semi-mule and Toyota Camry, and the driver of that car died on the scene. Deputies did arrest the male driver and he is now facing evading charges and other charges are still pending. Now the scene was just clearing up around seven this morning. As of right now, no identities have been released. Of course, we are still working to gather those that information as it becomes available. We're going to be on top of this story throughout the day. So stay with KSAT as we bring you the latest. Max Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. In your latest news this morning, local authorities searching for a suspected shooter after a scary situation that happened around 730 yesterday. This is the 200 block of Deerwood Drive. Police on the scene telling us three people were hanging out in the area. One person pulled out a gun and shot the victim. Then that suspect ran off. The person who was shot taken to the hospital. They are expected to recover. Also on the north side, a man is in critical condition following another shooting. This one happening in the 1000 block of McCullough Avenue and Highway 281. Authorities say the 24 year old man was shot in the upper part of his body and later taken to the hospital. There are no suspects at this time as police are still searching for them. Out of the latest on the pandemic here at home in Bear County, local health officials announcing 281 new cases of COVID. We now know one more person has died in the last 24 hours, though. That brings our total death toll to 2,997 people. In terms of local hospitalization numbers, 191 people in our local hospitals, 71 in the ICU, 41 on ventilators. Well, more than 900,000 first doses of the COVID-19 vaccine are coming to Texas next week. The Department of State Health Services announced the allocation on Friday. Metro Health is getting 300 doses of Moderna and 12,870 doses of Pfizer. 
University Health is getting the same number of Pfizer doses and WellMed is getting 7,020 doses of Pfizer. Every Sunday morning we have our leading essay segment. We speak to leaders in our community and today we are speaking to a local leader who has been instrumental in the growth of the south side of San Antonio and now she is the tri-chair on the 26 member Alamo Citizen Advisory Committee. Joining us in today's leading essay segment is Councilwoman Rebecca Villagran. Good morning Councilwoman. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to be here with you all. Well, thank you for joining us. Now, the south side of San Antonio has grown so much over the last few years, and it is not slowing down anytime soon. What does this progress look like, and what should people know about the projects and works? So thank you very much. Um, it has been. I've been so, the progress has been amazing, transformative, and I'm so proud. From economic development, we are seeing the job growth uh, with TJX, with the medical schools and an advanced manufacturing hub here in San Antonio with Toyota and Navistar so close to one another. You know, Navistar is an advanced manufacturing place and they are just building. So the jobs are still open right now that people can start um, applying for. And that's incredible because it also feeds into um, the work that we're trying to do with the Ready to Work San Antonio program, which many of the voters uh, voted for. So from economic development to infrastructure and our fix, our streets being fixed, our new hike and bike trails coming in on the southern sector, as well as to, um, of course, infrastructure and education. A new medical school was not there just five years ago, and now we have our medical school. And on Friday, you saw the University of Incarnate Word School of Osteopathic Medicine had its first match day where the inaugural cl class got matched with their first residencies. So it's just a new um, shot of adrenaline, a new great progress that is happening. And there's still more to come because we still have a more opportunity in the Southern sector, in district here in the South side. And that definitely all is exciting news. And Councilman, it is Women's History Month. And as you are a leader of our city, can you talk about the great women who have helped build the Alamo City? You know, there are so many incredible stories and so many stories that have also go uh, go untold in the school books. First, uh, you know, Emma Tenayuka, she was an advocate for labor rights and fought for the fair pay and fair treatment of the pecan shellers in San Antonio. And she was extremely young. Then I also like to talk about uh, all the time Catherine and Marjorie Stinson, who started um, these women started Stinson Airport knew how to fly, were teaching men how to fly before they even had the right to vote. And also all the women with indigenous roots in San Antonio <clears throat> who have fought to tell their stories, preserve traditions, and share their strength. And we see that a lot, especially around all of our missions and around our neighborhoods, because these are the families and the matriarchs that keep the stories living and alive. A story we've been following very closely, the Alamo Redevelopment Plan. You are now the tri-chair, so what exactly does that role entail and what can the people of San Antonio expect in terms of a game plan? So uh, it's a tremendous um, honor and a really a tremendous responsibility to be tri-chair and part of the management committee for the city of San Antonio. Um, what we are doing as tri-chairs, our role is to oversee this um, advisory committee that is over, um, that includes the GLO, the state, um, some scholars and citizens appointed by every single council district. Our role is to re-engage and utilize the Alamo Citizens Advisory Committee, um, have listening circles, see where we were before, and also present and move forward with all of those new changes um, that the mayor discussed, knowing that, you know, the cenotaph is not going to be moving, but we know that we're going to have, a, we will be repurposing, we would like to repurpose the Woolworth and the Crockett building. We also know that we'd like to see more flexibility in the streets and have the plaza more porous and more flexible for the people, because it is a plaza for the people. Um, and of course, still maintaining all of the telling the whole story of the Alamo, which includes the vision and guiding principles, which is a 16 page document, not just a uh, eight bullet points, but it's a 16 page document that comes and tells themes from all of these years. So we've already started our 
meetings with the Alamo Citizens Advisory Committee. We're having a, pub, a workshop next week, and we'll continue to have public meetings besides um, after that as well. And Councilman, before we let you go, okay, the municipal election is in May. So what is next for you? Well, thank you. Um, you know, this eight years has been absolutely incredible, and I've learned so much. And uh, what I would love to do is continue to work um, public service. I will always keep all options for public service on the table, but intergovernmental uh, relations and working with r governments at all levels, from the local to the state to the federal, that is something that I've done before. That is something that I love and I thrive in, and that's something that I'll be continuing in the future. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you all so much. All right, time now is just about 8 11, 48 degrees out. We are talking Spurs. The road trip is over and it did not end in a great fashion. We're going to have the highlights and some of the lowlights after the break. Plus, Matthew McConaughey is helping out winter storm victims through a virtual concert. We'll tell you when and how to watch it later this evening. Hmm. And after the break, visiting an enchanted land with the whole family. Details on the Dragon Forest, the San Antonio Zoo. Whoa. Dragons, what? <laughs> I'm here for it. All right, it is 46 degrees out there, according to Mike, and some low-hanging clouds out there as well. But what will our Sunday look like on this second day of spring? He'll let us know when we come back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. If you are looking for something fun to do with the family today, what about the San Antonio Zoo? For a limited time, you can check out the Dragon Forest. I just want to say Dragon Forest. All right. I like the voice. Can you do the rest of the show with that voice? The Dragon Forest. It's an immersive experience. Okay. That transports adventure seekers into a wooded kingdom with 15 different dragons in a separately ticketed event adjacent to the zoo. This event marks the first time the zoo has utilized its property on the west side of 281 and the first time these dragons have been seen in San Antonio. Wow. The Enchanted Land includes Renaissance Fair themed food, I'm in, mm -hmm. merchandise, entertainment for an immersive experience admission, $10 for non-San Antonio Zoo members, and eight for members open from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. I'm all in for the Renaissance Fair stuff. It's, it's fun. It's, I don't know. It's Yes, you in the blue tie. Uh, it's more <laughs> aqua, but anyway, uh, what's Renaissance Fair food? A uh, big turkey leg. Okay, just like Huge right. Huge turkey leg. You walk around and you feel like it's, you know, 500. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You just got like a you know whole leg of lamb just gnawing on it. And stuff that's, like that. that's the dream, Mike. That's the whole point. That's the dream. <laughs> but today it does look like a perfect day to head out there. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. I didn't realize they own property on the west side of a. Uh, yeah, right it's there. pretty cool. More you know. Huh. See, it's an educational program as well. But <laughs> yes, it is going to be absolutely perfect to. Uh, well, listen, don't forget the train. I remember if you guys when was the last time you were on the train over there at the zoo because we were talking you, about it yesterday, and I said, guys, we need to yes, do the train. My boys, when they were little, I mean, couldn't get enough of that. So I love hearing the little choo-choo. It's just, I mean, even if you're driving along right there, it just kind of makes you smile a little bit. So, hey, 46 degrees right now. It is definitely chilly. If you're uh, heading out, grab a light jacket. But, boy, you sure won't need it later on this afternoon. And uh, we have just got sunny, fantastic weather today. Plenty of clouds, though. They're going to come back in here overnight, and we'll have a couple of showers. Maybe some mist and drizzle in the morning. There's a small chance for a shower during the day, but then tomorrow night's going to be the better chance for some rain. And then we have another rain chance coming in here on Wednesday. And overall, yes, I guess you'd say on the warm side, uh, temperatures will be at or maybe a couple of notches just above normal this week. And talk about making you smile. Doesn't this picture just make you smile? I love the way, you know, in the foreground, it's in focus, kind of out of focus there in the background. But how pretty is that? That's just a gorgeous picture. So we need to have a little like contest or something like that for all of our KSAC Connect pictures. Are you we can judge. Some... Pardon me. Are you going to be the judge? No. We have our master gardener, so we're fine. We have our master gardener. Oh there. my God! <laughs> stop. Coast, she can judge. So anyway, <laughs> uh, beautiful start this morning, and still a few of those leftover clouds out there. But yeah, just a, a fantastic day. Hey, normal temperatures, and this is what we call normal. I know it's kind of a weird phrase to use, but it's the average temperature low or high, um, the 30-year average here in town. And right now we are in just about the, oh, kind of low to mid-70s. And then that obviously was going to start to uh, go on up. And 
couple of months ago, right after uh, the first of the year, Christmas time, it sort of flattened out a little bit. We reached sort of that lower plateau. Now it starts to go up fairly quickly in through roughly June. Then it's going to start to plateau just a little bit. But of course, we then increase going into those uh, couple of weeks in August when the normal high temperature is at 97 degrees. But yeah, every couple of weeks, it's the average. The normal high is going to go up uh, to close to three degrees. A 44 in Port S.A. right now, 45 Bandera and 37. These are the dew point temperatures, and so the air is still very low. Now, relative to the actual air temperature, we've got a lot of humidity out there because this is very close to the air temperature, but the uh, number wise for the dew point is still well below 60, so it's comfortable out there. It's going to stay comfortable all day long. A lot more sunshine. Dew points stay in the 40s. So it'll start to creep up a little bit, and then especially overnight, humidity is really going to come back on in here. And as that humidity surges back on in, may actually see a little bit of uh, mist tomorrow morning, perhaps a patch or two of fog around the area. Then we have that chance for some rain, which this computer model is doing a pretty good job picking up. So overnight, clouds come back in here. A little bit of uh, sprinkly showers, some rain, some fog tomorrow evening. Showers, even a couple of thunderstorms. Those will be working their way across in the nighttime hours. Probably they're going to be out of here by the drive time on Tuesday morning. Tuesday, a bit of a break in the action. And then it's going to pick back up on Wednesday with another chance for some uh, showers and thunderstorms. So 64 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies. Just get out and enjoy it, be it with the master gardener there or <laughs> Get a little dirt underneath the fingernails, 74 degrees, sunny skies, and uh, tomorrow we are going to start off with a little bit of patchy fog, uh, maybe some mist here and there, lots of clouds throughout the day. Rain, especially tomorrow night, Tuesday breaking the action, another chance, and I think uh, probably a little bit better chance for some rain on Wednesday, showers and thunderstorms into the overnight hours, and then uh, Thursday looks pretty good. You know the best part about this? Hmm. We get to do it all again tomorrow morning because we are back. I know. Look Ooh, at that. Yeah, you're you're going to have both of us. <laughs> add, <laughs> add, oh and add Spivey into the mix. That's true. We are going to have so much fun tomorrow on GMSA. And I'm going to be the oddball. <laughs> there you which, go. It's okay. We'll welcome you. <laughs> Let's be honest here. We which know Sarah's the oddball. Case. Wow. <laughs> I, I embrace being the odd one. Time now, 820, 48 degrees. It's like out. two kids in the back seat on a road trip. <laughs> are we there yet? I have to sit between you two. Oh my gosh. Okay, still ahead on GMSA, an update when it comes to the NCAA weight room backlash. Yes, we talked about this yesterday. So what organizers are now saying they are originally told by teams. And San Antonio Spurs hitting the court again last night. We have a recap right after the break. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, zero, three, fireball six, daily four, zero, three, four, nine, fireball two. And your cash five, three, six, 12, 21, 24, Lotto, Texas, four, nine, 20, 28, 34, 37. Powerball one, six, 22, 42, 61, Powerball four, power play three. Good luck, we'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back. Happy Sunday and go Spurs, go San Antonio Spurs in Milwaukee last night, the final game of their five game road trip. Let's take a look at the highlights, first quarter. Lonnie Walker with the steal and a layup past the defender. Spurs are up 21-16. Drew Eubanks from three. Splash over defender. It is good. 26-21 San Antonio leading 33-26 after one. Trey Jones with the steal. The Rook feeding Rudy Gay. Power finish. 22 gets big. Goes in. That's a layup. Boom. Three-point play. 42-28 San Antonio. Closing seconds though. There it was Drew Holiday, step back three at the buzzer. Milwaukee would lead 57 to 50 at halftime. Let's go to the second half. Second half, Spurs down. Yeah, that's the face of being down. Down 69 to 64 later. Oh, well, right there. It, it just gets worse from what we just saw right there. There it was, though. Drew Holiday, part of the problem. There it is. 69 61. Splash. Starting to make a little bit of comeback. 64 69. And then. There you go, good finish. We're starting to get close, guys. And then this is where the Bucks kind of start pulling away. Number one from three, there we go. It's back and forth at this point with DeMar picking the ball up. Look at that, rattles in, but here's the thing. The Spurs just could not finish. They would lose 113 to 120. The good news is the road trip is over. DeMar is back and the Spurs are coming back home. They open up a nine game homestand, taking on the Charlotte Hornets tomorrow night at 7.30. So we are filled with optimism. Last time I checked, 
They're in the seventh seed. So if the playoffs started tomorrow, which they don't, Spurs would be in. That's a way to think about it. Right there. <laughs> Boom. All right. 826, 48 degrees out. We'll still ahead in our next half hour. The Green Lantern finally sits down to watch his own superhero movie for the first time. Hmm. Details on what Ryan Reynolds has to say about it in today's Morning Spotlight. Plus, baseball tickets soaring ahead of opening day. What we know about the COVID restrictions and more next on GMSA. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Sarah Costa. I'm, you know, a lot of behind the scenes things happen. And we like to have fun here. We didn't know we were going to be at the Storyteller in about, about six seconds ago. So it was a sprint on a over sprint. here. A sprint. And I think uh, your mic fell. You know, we, we, we roll with it. It's true. All right, we're going to roll on over to Mike Osterhage. Mike? 48 degrees out there, second day of spring. Yesterday, gorgeous. Why do you have a school bus up? I thought, I thought you had new uh, boots on there. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> A lot of times the ladies wear the, the, a band around their leg and the skirt to hold all the mic boxes and everything on there. That one, yeah, that was down around your ankle there. So, Hey, t tomorrow morning uh, we're going to have a lot in the way of clouds. It's going to be different than this morning. Milder temperatures and uh, with all the humidity coming back on in, probably have a little bit of fog around as well as some mist. That's going to be a possibility. Maybe a shower during the day. Doubtful with that, we will make it up uh, into the upper 60s tomorrow after school. And then we are going to be getting up to um, right around the mid 70s again tomorrow. And we'll have a better chance for some rain once we get into tomorrow night. More on that in just a moment. Beautiful shots starting off this morning, looking off to the east there. The sun has come up a uh, little bit of a haze out there. We got a few clouds hanging around, as you can see, but it's just a really nice looking morning and there was the very dry air yesterday that kind of brownish tan shade there and then we just still do have fairly dry air um, maybe a little bit of a milky shade to the sky and that will start to come in here a little more see how there's a little more moisture coming in here upstairs in the atmosphere so still a great day but again maybe not as intense a blue sky but Nothing to really complain about today in the low humidity out there. Latest allergen count, I mean, you still have a slew of them out there and actually too many to put on this uh, this graphic. A little bit of pine is showing up as well, but oak is still on the moderate side. And throughout the day, 64 at noon, 74 for high temperature, plenty of sunshine. Again, maybe a milky shade of the sky, but just a great looking day. So get out and enjoy it. Got a couple of rain chances to talk about, so that's some really good news. That and a whole lot more coming up. Sarah? Thank you, Mike. Well, one man is now in custody following a deadly crash in Northeast Bear County. That's right. Bear County Sheriff's Office tells us that the chase ended in a crash off Ritterman and Frat, not too far from Walsham. Stephen Cavazos is live north of downtown this morning. Stephen, how did this all start? Well, Sarah Max, according to BCSO, this started not too far from the 7400 block of Terrassa Drive. That is where a deputy spotted that gray vehicle driving recklessly in the area, speeding as well. They say that that driver was also hitting some curbs and refused to stop, and that's when that chase had kicked off. Now, the chase continued with the driver passing through traffic lights, and according to BCSO, at one point, the driver was heading in the wrong direction. Now, that car drove into the wrong lane and crashed into a semi-mule at Toyota Camry. Deputies took the driver in into custody. We're told the driver of the semi mule was still in good condition. However, the driver of the Camry did die on the scene. Now, BCSO does tell us the driver of that gray car is facing some serious charges, for instance, evading a deputies during that chase. But other charges are also pending right now. As of this morning, no identities have been released. Of course, we are still working to gather that information. We're going to be on top of this story throughout the day. So again, stay with KSAT as we bring you the latest. Reporting live north of downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Max Sarah, over to you. Also new this morning, investigators are working to figure out exactly what happened and who is responsible after a man was shot in the chest. This all happened just after midnight near Pearl Parkway and Avenue B. Police tell us a 47 year old man walked up to an off duty police officer and asked for help. The man had a gunshot wound to the chest. He claims that two men walked up to him and attempted to rob him. When he refused to give up his belongings, the suspect shot the man in the chest. He was taken to Bamsey in stable condition. This incident remains under investigation. And also new this morning, a woman facing charges of aggravated robbery after San Antonio police say that she sent two men to scare her mother. According to the arrest affidavit, 17 year old China Marie Francis sent two men to her mother's home back on March 5th around 9 p.m. with intentions of robbing her at gunpoint. Now the report, the arrest affidavit says it's because Francis and her mother were not getting along in recent weeks. Police say when the woman was being robbed, 
Her other child was getting home, called the police. The two men took off when they saw officers arriving. Francis now being held on a $120,000 bond. In your latest news this morning, a Von Ormy police sergeant recovering after being injured in a head-on crash. Police tell us that another driver had left their vehicle in the main southbound lanes of I-35 at New Laredo Highway yesterday morning. Take a look at this. This all happened over a blind hill, and that's when Sergeant John Fernandez hit the vehicle head on. Sergeant Fernandez injured his leg and was taken to an area hospital for further treatment. Now, the sergeant's vehicle also caught fire, as you just saw. I just saw nothing but flames in front of me, like on my hood. I kind of felt the heat through the glass. My face, I felt the heat on my face. If I didn't get out of this car, I was going to die right now. Um, I, I, I did not want that to happen. The other driver, a 37-year-old man, ran off before officers arrived. Police say he was eventually taken into custody near Ray Ellison and Southwest Loop 410. Charges still pending. The investigation still ongoing. Meanwhile, a San Antonio mother is desperate for answers. This after her 16-year-old son was gunned down last month. San Antonio police say, it, say Isaiah Sullivan was shot in a black SUV and thrown out near the Star Club apartments on the northeast side. His mother, Carla Stevenson, said her son was a good kid who loved to play with younger children outside. She said he loved basketball and joking around with his family. The sudden death has devastated her and his four other siblings. All of us having a hard time understanding why somebody would do him like that, the way they did him. San Antonio police are still searching for the suspect. They are asking the community for tips that could lead to an arrest. If you have any information, you are urged to call that number on your screen for Crime Stoppers 210-224-STOP. Now to a story we've been following throughout the morning. We are still waiting on more information about a woman reportedly hit by a train while walking near the tracks in shirts. Now this happened around 5 yesterday afternoon in the 100 block of FM 78. Police say the woman suffered serious injuries and she was taken to the hospital. We are following this. Any more information, you can find that on KSAT.com. In your morning headlines, Dallas police responded to a shooting incident at a nightclub early Saturday morning where eight people were hit by gunfire. The shooting reportedly followed an argument between two different groups at the Prime Bar. All of the eight wounded people were taken to the hospital, but 20, a 21 year old woman died from her injuries. The conditions of the other people range from just being minor conditions to hurt to stable to critical conditions. Surveillance video appears to have captured the suspect on camera. Dallas police are not sure which direction he took off when he fled the scene. A state of emergency declared throughout Miami Beach because of COVID-19, but it's not the virus numbers. It's actually an effort to prevent the spread of the virus. The Miami Beach Police Department says they have had concerns about the bigger than expected crowds in the area celebrating spring break and 8 p.m. curfew began last night in some of the areas, including the city's entertainment district. It feels like just any any uh, any match could set it off and we don't want to wait to uh, take uh, these kinds of actions in the wake of a, a tremendous tragedy. We want to we want to take it now when we've seen enough and we have definitely seen enough. Now, these curfews, these measures will be in effect for at least 72 hours. An emergency special meeting is also set to be held today. Well, Major League Baseball's opening day is just nine days away. Now, fans who were hoping to get back in the stands after last year's COVID restrictions, they're finding a new obstacle, sky-high ticket prices on the secondary market. ABC's Trevor Alt has a story. This morning, baseball diehards like lifelong Cubs fan Pete Seed can't wait to get back to the game, but it might cost a pretty penny. We see stories about some stadiums where the cheapest tickets available on the secondary market right now are upwards of $500 per ticket. With stadiums capping their capacity to as little as 12%, those coveted remaining seats are in short supply, sending secondary market prices skyrocketing to hundreds or thousands of dollars. Plus, with teams keeping the available seats in clusters of one to six people, you can often only find group tickets for sale. So the most affordable option on StubHub for the Yankees opener is three tickets for more than $1,000. 
some of the cheapest opening day seats we could find are the Rays and the Marlins in Miami, a pair of upper deck seats for $87 a piece. That same day, I can book a flight from New York to Miami for $89. For fans that are looking for, for tickets for opening day and beyond, um, I'm sure they're a little, little shocked with the current price. And we do expect as more and more fans have access to tickets as season ticket holders, we expect that the prices will level out. And the price spikes we're seeing are strictly secondhand. You might have to fight to get one directly from a team, but Major League Baseball executives tell us the average ticket they sell this year will cost $48, the same as it was in 2019. A home run! By and large, the ticket prices are the same, and clubs are very mindful of what's going on in the world and you know the struggle that many families have. It's that milestone moment where we can say, okay, the light is at the end of the tunnel. We can see it. We're getting closer and closer and closer to what we all know to be normal life. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Well, teams at the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament finally have a weight room. A day after it was heavily criticized, the NCAA had originally told teams in a manual that there wouldn't be a weight room facility until after the second round when only 16 teams would remain. They changed that plan after a tweet from Stanford strength coach had and a video from Oregon Sedonia Prince went viral with nearly 16 million views showing off a single rack of dumbbells and a yoga and yoga mats. Meanwhile, the men's team had a full equipment set up. We're well, going back to Trevor Alt story with the baseball tickets. Yeah. Just looked up Spurs tickets for Monday hosting the Hornets. They're as cheap as $32, and they're pretty good. Row 15. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Look at that, tying it all together. 842, 49 degrees out. Well, just ahead, a music night benefiting people who are impacted by winter storm Uri. Yuri. So the celebrities you can jam out with on Matthew McConaughey's YouTube channel. Okay. Plus, Drake, a.k.a. Aubrey. Aubrey Graham. That's his real name. Is that his real name? Yeah. Look at you. I know things. Uh, he is making history with his new album, After the Break, what the Billboard chart is saying about his debut in your morning spotlight. She's impressed I knew entertainment news. I'm very proud of you. Mm. All right. Toronto's very own. October's very own. 46 <laughs> degrees outside, looking a little cloudy out there, but Mike says things should clear up just a bit. He'll have our full forecast when we come back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. In your Spotlight News this morning, Drake making a historic return to the top of the music charts this week. Makes me feel so close to him. <laughs> All right, the Billboard says the rap artist's new songs debuted in the top three spots on its Hot 100 list. He is the first artist to make such a debut in the same week. Drake has not been in the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100 since 2018. Hmm. Kanye West, worth $6 billion, yes, billion with a B. There you go, the 43-year-old rapper turned fashion and athletic shoe mogul, now worth $6.6 .6 billion, according to Bloomberg. The vast majority of his wealth tied up in his apparel businesses. The combined value of West's Yeezy sneaker partnership with Adidas and his clothing line now with The Gap is worth as much as $4.7 billion. His music catalog alone, that's actually only worth $110 million. Ah, trunk change. <laughs> Actor and Texas native, McCott, Texas native Matthew McConaughey is hosting a virtual concert tonight called We're Texas at 7 o'clock this evening to benefit those impacted by winter storm Uri through the Just Keep Living Foundation's Texas Relief Fund. I'm just going to throw it out here. You seemed a lot more excited about Drake than you did about Matthew McConaughey. I No, I, I like Matthew McConaughey. Right, so the event will be streamed for free on Matthew McConaughey's YouTube channel. The concert feature musical performances by people including Don Henley, Gary Clark Jr., George Strait, Kelly Clarkson, Khalid. Khalid. Khalid, sorry. Still learning about <laughs> entertainment news. Los Lonely Boys. Did I get that one right? Mm -hmm. uh, Miranda Lambert, Post Malone, shout out Posty, Willie Nelson, and many more. Wow, he's got a... It's geez. Matthew McConaughey. Kind of a big deal. All right, and you may or may not know, but actor Ryan Reynolds has actually never watched his breakout 2011 superhero film, Green Lantern. Are we calling it breakout? 
So it came before he did Deadpool, and he spent several years jokingly criticizing the movie. Well, on Wednesday, Ryan Reynolds finally watched Green Lantern for the first time, and he tweeted all about it. He said he watched it while drinking a good amount of gin. All right. After watching the film, Reynolds actually said it wasn't so bad. He said the scene with his now wife, Blake Lively, was, quote, not bad foreshadowing for my life as a dad. So it's foreshadowing, but it was also kind of a uh, commercial for his gin company. Oh. Um, yeah, that was the whole tweet. And he's it's all like, about needed, money. It's a smart See, he's trying like, to get to that $6.6 .6 billion. Ooh, Kanye status. It wasn't my favorite superhero movie, but mm -hmm. I, I thought Green Lantern was okay. It was yeah. funny. It was cute. Yeah, it was a lot better than some of the other... Uh, What's DC? your least favorite, Mike? Um, um, the DC ones. All right. Wonder, yeah. The first Wonder Woman was the best one. Aquaman, eh. eh. But, I mean, the Superman, Batman... No. Producer's no. now yelling at us, so I we got to talk about I know. the weather. I, my weather time has been just hacked, but no, no. <laughs> I mean, all that... In, now, nah, anyway, <laughs> hey, talk about something that is just, I, how, if this is what you're waking up to this morning, how wonderful is that? Daily dose of God's handiwork out there at Medina Lake. It is gorgeous out there, but notice how, yeah, the lake is down. Could use some rain. We do have a little bit of rain in the forecast. Uh, and wow, what a beautiful start here in town as well. A few high wispy clouds out there. We'll keep some of those around throughout the rest of uh, today. And humidity, which is fairly low right now, is going to be going up overnight. So we'll have more humidity around here. Uh, maybe lead to a little patchy fog, some mist tomorrow. And then that's going to continue to go up into Wednesday. Then we have another front moving on through here. Knock the humidity out, but at least when that front moves through, it is going to squeeze some of that out and hopefully get some rain with it. Today, nothing. A couple of high clouds, maybe a milky shade to the sky. A lot of clouds tomorrow, and then throughout the day, a shower is possible. Wouldn't count on it, but tomorrow night is when we start to see the better chance for some rain move on in here. And that should be out of here by drive time Tuesday morning. Tuesday looks pretty good. Then the clouds come back in here into Wednesday. Wednesday will have some showers and thunderstorms around, maybe even in the afternoon going into the evening hours, kind of sticking around here. The majority of it, though, uh, is going to be still further up to the north and east of us. So we're still going to be kind of on the tail end of this. It always seems to be the case that we just get the little little bits and pieces here, little straggling ends of this thing, but we will still have a little bit of rain moving in here uh, or leftover, I should say, on Thursday morning, and then that's going to be clearing out. And as of right now, the upcoming weekend, even though this one's not done, might as well look forward to the next weekend, is looking pretty good. 64 degrees today at noon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature today up to 74. Oh, just a nice day out there, maybe a couple of high clouds. And then tomorrow we will have a lot of clouds around, some fog, mist possible in the morning, a lot more humidity, 74, 80 on Tuesday. Another chance of rain Wednesday, and then we'll clear out going into the rest of next week. All right. Sarah, your sidekick. <laughs> Thank you. I Thank you, consider Mike. myself Robin to Batman. <laughs> 851, 49 degrees now. I want to be Batman. All right. No, finding... You are Batman. I'm Robin. <laughs> okay. Finding the perfect daycare isn't easy, and the pandemic has made that process even more complicated. Tomorrow on GMSA, find out what parents can do to give their children the best start. In the news you need to know before you go, one person dead, another in custody after an overnight chase just off Ritterman near Walsham. All this happening around 2.30 this morning. BCSO tells us it started when a deputy spotted a car driving recklessly at a high speed. The driver refused to stop, and that's when the chase began. That driver eventually drove into the wrong lane, crashing into two different vehicles. Deputies took the driver into custody where... We're told he is in good condition, but the driver of a sedan he crashed into died on the scene. BCSO tells us the reckless driver now facing charges of evading vehicle and other charges are still pending. Well, that's it for now, but thank you so much for joining us this morning. Mike Osterhage, always a pleasure. I enjoy it. All what right. a way to spend a Sunday morning. And you know what's really exciting? Mm. The three of us will be back tomorrow and morning on GMSA. Spivey's going to be here to keep